Let us pray. O God of new seasons, a God of new beginnings, we thank you for the new season we are entering today, season of the church, season of our lives. As we gather together with all our challenges, issues, joys, and pains, we come before you at the beginning of this month and bring all our challenges to you so that we can be guided, blessed, and directed as we go back into the world. Teach us, O oh God, to be your disciples in word, deed, and in the, with the specific gifts you've given us. And grant us today, O oh God, the spirit to listen, to hear with more than our ears, but with our hearts. And this we pray through Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, church, and welcome to the month of September. After a series of reflections on evangelism and church growth, the last month and the months before, we will transition to a variety of topics this month in September. The series on evangelism and church growth practically for us at the cathedral concluded with the consecration of St. Thomas Anglican Church in Singela and the consecration of the three bishops here last Sunday and a confirmation of our candidates in Singela and of the cathedral in uh, St. Peter's. It's a kind of a climax to a season on church growth and evangelism. A practical sermon, a pr practical demonstration of what God is doing in his church. In September, we will focus on discipleship, and in October, in financial stewardship. From today's readings, we will reflect on two aspects of this discipleship based on our readings for today. Transitional discipleship, transitional discipleship, and secondly, the stewardship of discipleship. And from the readings, we will discern what God is telling us about these two aspects. Transitional discipleship is a process, is a process by which a disciple is found, formed, and is prepared to reform others. So transitional discipleship is the finding of a disciple, and the formation of that discipleship, disciple, and preparing that disciple now to reform others. And that's what our mission and ministry is here in the cathedral. Every ministry that exists here is for that purpose, is to make us better disciples through that ministry, and in the process also to empower others. Discipleship is not an end in itself. It is a means by which discipleship is born again. 
And so new forms of expressions of discipleship continue to grow. Nobody becomes a disciple to end as a disciple without any impact on anybody. Then that person was not a disciple. And so that is the essence of being a disciple. We read of the two model discipleship process in the Isaiah passage and John, Gospel of John passage. The Isaiah passage, just when prophet Elijah was translated from his earthly life into heavenly life, as you heard from the reading, in chariots of fire, witnessed by his disciple, one would say a senior disciple, Elisha. Suddenly, Elisha, from that point, was transitioned into his ministry that God had called him. Elisha was a faithful disciple in Elijah's prophetic school. He was not the only student under Elijah. There were many in that prophetic school. And Elisha happened to be one of them Definitely from the readings, we know that he had a prominent position with uh, Elijah. And it is upon this Elijah, Elisha, that Elijah's mantle falls to continue his ministry. There were many others in Elijah's uh, prophetic school, however, Elisha the faithful is the only one who insisted on following Elijah where he was going. And Elijah said, look, I've got to go and meet with God. You stay here. I'll go and do what I have to do. And he said, no, where you're going, I'm coming with you. And he said, fine, if that's the case, you come with me. But he also added, I would like a double portion of what you have of your spirit. Elijah said, well, that's not up to me. That's not me who gives those portions. But if you see me go, then let it be. And so the, uh, Elijah was faithful to his master, Elijah everywhere, and also even having the one, in some uh, versions you think it is the audacity to ask, but it was actually a traditional cultural thing that he did. It was nothing strange in the Jewish tradition. The whole school of prophets, of learners, residential is an old Middle Eastern and Eastern tradition for disciples to become a living on the job training process. They lived there, trained on the job, and the process was not just academic, but it was philosophical, but also practical. The potential disciples of Christ asked Jesus, where do you live? Not where your school is, where do you live? To which Jesus replied, follow me. And so it's a, it, it was an old tradition that you find from the Middle East going uh, eastwards. Schools under certain gurus. Paul was a living student of Gamaliel. And he studied under him. And how his thinking philosophy was born out of that professor. Eastern gurus are known to have resident disciples who are in formation. Our seminaries, theological 
college seminaries which are training students for ordained ministry are created in that format. They are indeed designed for residential formation. It's the same system that has evolved into seminaries. It was also an Israelite tradition for the eldest son to inherit a double portion of the father's inheritance. So when Elisha requested Elijah for a double portion of his spirit, it was in this context that this is tradition among us, and I am your oldest. I'm your number one. And it's in that context that Elisha had the courage to ask. However, all disciples are called to a stewardship of their discipleship. Once you get a title, then it's all over attitude. Doesn't work. We don't work for a title. We work for discipleship. And therefore, it is a continuous process. Stewardship of discipleship is about faithfulness and accountability. Faithfulness and accountability with what the master has entrusted his disciples. And if you are not accountable, you cannot expect to remain with that master. If you are not faithful, you cannot expect to remain with that master. There will be a reformation process, but you will find that you are no longer in that school. Because your school of thought is not the same. And therefore, you cannot remain in that school. So that is the process one has to go through to be a a steward of discipleship. In the Colossian reading, Paul is commissioned as a steward of the gospel of Christ, a steward of the progressive revelation of the word of God. As God continues to reveal himself afresh and new in his revelation, in the past, he revealed himself to us in many and various ways. In these days, Hebrews 1.1, 1, 1, he reveals himself to us in Christ Jesus. Progressive revelation. A disciple has to be a good steward of what God has entrusted us so that more will be entrusted to us. When one is faithful with what one has been entrusted. Remember, it is not given, it is entrusted. Anything that is entrusted is accountable. And that's the discipline that we need to exercise. When one is, when one is faithful with what one has been and trusted, negative reputations will be reversed. Negative reputations will be reversed. Historical perceptions will be reversed. And like what good can come out of Nazareth will change. With faithful discipleship that Jesus exercised, for us to follow. It will be rewritten. History will be rewritten because of our faithfulness. Your story will change. What people have said about you will change. They will rewrite your story. They will put new history new story into your story which will become history. 
And so you need to know that when God calls you and gives you a gift, a talent, when God gives you or calls you out and sets you apart, you are on a path to newness, starting something new. No matter who has told you about you, whether it's at home, school, and I've heard stories of several of this, teachers telling students you will amount to nothing. It's reversed. Can I hear an amen? If you've ever heard that in your life, it is reversed. Parents telling children the same thing. That will be reversed. So your negative path is cut and reversed into a new or redirected into a new direction. Discipleship is about transformation. So don't live in the past. September 1st is a good day. It's a good day to change certain perceptions. I can't do it perception. I'm no good perception. It's not possible perception. Changes. It changes. Because if you repeat it every day, you are your doomsday disciple of yourself. You are being created into a disciple of your own doomsday mindset. Positive. Ask God to change your attitudes. And the negative bits will be cleaned up. Be faithful with what God has entrusted you, and you have no idea where he's going to take you. It's not what other people say, think, or perceive about you. You were born to change that negative story. You will never say, what good can come out of Nazareth ever again? Jesus changed it. And so, my friends, as Paul writes in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2, you are called to be transitional good steward disciple of Christ and trusting other re reliable people with what you were entrusted. Paul says in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2, what you have heard from me what you have learned from me, and trust it to other reliable people who can in, in turn and trust others. It's a continuous process. Discipleship doesn't end with one person. Discipleship doesn't end with you or me. We are to faithfully transition others so that they can reform. Last week we had the consecration service of three bishops here in this cathedral. It is our tradition as Anglicans, and particularly in the understanding of the ordained ministry, that when a person is called to divine service as a deacon, mind my words, when one is called to service as a divine, a divine service as an ordained deacon, one may also be called and added to that calling is the task of a priest. And one may also be called, in addition to being a priest, to be called to be an archdeacon. One may also be called to be a dean. One may also be called to be a vicar general. One may also be called to be a bishop. One may also be called to be an archbishop. However, I never 
cease to be a deacon. I die as a deacon. And all these other things were just added unto me as responsibilities. They are not promotions, and they are not essentially in the church titles. Those have become, titles have become distractions because the calling is to be a deacon, a servant of the Lord. I must preach and I must live my life as a disciple of Christ living with him. Not Maybe as the church perceives it and has leadership has evolved and gives the impression that I can live the way I want. I can then preach what I need to preach. I can be a politician and say what I want to say and do what I want to do, independent of what I say. It doesn't work. When you continue doing that, we've lost the purpose for which we become disciples. We only take on additional responsibility. It's never a promotion, but a faithful stewardship of what God entrusts us. Faithfulness. Nobody is looking for a successful person. There is no such thing in the church. God is looking for a faithful person. Success is his gift to us. What we have done ourselves is we have reversed the order. We run after, after success and forget it was a calling to faithfulness. So anything goes, success is the key. That's what's got us into this trouble including my Lord Shedding. Unable to manage God's resources accordingly. Because we have to be successful in something and therefore exploit it as much as possible. But if we did manage what God has entrusted us as good stewards, we wouldn't be in the mess that we are as individuals, families, and even as a nation. More will be required of those who have faithfully executed their tasks and trusted to them. Elijah was not taken into heaven without, sorry, Elijah was taken to heaven without dying. We read in 2 Kings 2 and verse 11. So was Enoch. Genesis 5 and verse 24. This will be the experience of believers in Christ. Disciples of Christ who will be living at Christ's return. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 51 and 1 Thessalonians 4:17. Christ came today, those who are in Christ will be taken up to him, heaven to meet up with him in the skies. As a firstborn in Christ, you are entitled to God's blessings upon you. There are firstborns and then there are firstborns. When my late father, who was dean in Kitwe, was retiring in 2001, there was a service for his retirement. And everybody was lining up and the clergy were lining up and they said, yeah, who is the mantle going to fall on? As 
Father Thomas Sr. retires his mantle. They were waiting for his mantle. I think they meant his job. But the, the mantle is more than a job. So while they were discussing and arguing who is the better one among them, there walks in the true elder son. And I was working at Mindola at that time, assisting in the same cathedral, and I walked in robed to stand in the procession. And they looked at me. The argument stopped. And they parted their ways and allowed me to pass through and that's what is waiting for you. When they see the children of God, the true disciple of Christ, they will part ways and make way for you. Because you are the firstborn in God's kingdom. I count it, dear friends, a great privilege and honor to be a disciple of Christ, trying to be better than I was yesterday, trying to be a better person than I was yesterday, being continuous tense that is used in the Corinthian passage, being transformed into the likeness and image of Christ. Be blessed in your transitional discipleship and in the stewardship of your discipleship with faithfulness. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit.